to St. Mark's, to everyone who is worshiping with us, both online and in person, it is a joy to be with you this morning. I'm Pastor Julia Gonzalez, and today, as you may have guessed, Pastor Brian and I are trading roles. Would you please stand for our call to worship? Lord, we come to you today searching for answers. But with faith the size of a mustard seed, mountains can be moved. By faith we will see the world transformed. transformed. Would you please remain standing for our opening hymn, For the Beauty of the Earth? It can be found in your hymnal on page 92, or the words will be on the screen. We are entering in a construction project up here. It's not going to be a major renovation, but we are uh, broadening the, the uh, platform so that it will include all the way over to where the drum is and around, and there'll be a, a ramp up by the sound booth to make it more accessible. Uh, so uh, for the next few weeks, there'll be a little bit of a mess, and at least uh, one or two of those weeks, we'll be worshiping in Wesley Hall. So when you come in, we'll kind of direct you uh, the way that you... Uh, we're told this project's supposed to take four to six weeks, so we're and uh, it's not a terribly long-term project. So we uh, uh, want to ask for your forbearance as we uh, as we have a little bit of a mess for the next few weeks. I would like to invite you to join together in the opening prayer. So let us pray. Loving and gracious God, 
When you spoke, life sprang into being. Your creativity and care is there for us to see in all that you have created, all the intricacies from the bumblebee to the blue whale. We rejoice today in the work of your hands. Reveal to us the glory of creation and revive our faith by your spirit, by our faith in your Son and Spirit. Let us see your kingdom come and your will be done. In the name of the Son, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. If you would, please remain in place where you are, but turn and uh, uh, offer signs of God's peace to those around you. It is good to share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. As we move to reflect on our mission, hospitality, and generosity, I would like to turn your attention to the blue section in the bulletin where we have a few announcements. Um, last week, we were able to celebrate giving by Bibles to our preschoolers, and in a few weeks, we will be celebrating giving Bibles to our third graders. So if you know a third grader in, who is in need of a Bible, please let us know, and you can contact Ramey or Jackie in Children's Ministry for more information. Next Sunday, September 12th, from 8 to 1, we will be having a blood, tri a blood drive. There is an emergency need for blood right now, so if you are able or you know someone who is able and hasn't donated in a while, you are encouraged to sign up at stmarkscarmel.org slash blood. We have several upcoming studies beginning. We are seeing the return of mothers of preschoolers to the church facilities during the week. And we are seeing, seeing different support groups beginning. So there is much to look forward to as we see things continue. I would like to let you know that uh, we had been scheduled to host IHN, but on Friday we learned that IHN is postponing and canceling all hosting churches until 2022. They are going to be continuing to support families through the apartment system that they were using during 2020. Um, there are, if you would like to learn more and there's and other ways that you can still help, you can go to stmarkscarmel.org slash IHN. As Pastor Brian pointed out, we've got a lot of construction to look forward to, and we appreciate your patience, and we know that we will continue to see God's glory shine. Our mission focus this month is the Society of St. Andrew, and September also happens to be National Hunger Action Month. Over 70 million people in the U.S. today are hungry or are food insecure. It is estimated we will unfortunately throw away over 133 billion pounds of good food in 2021. The Society of St. Andrew sends willing volunteers to glean fresh fruit and vegetables from fields and orchards, and they seek to share healthy and nourishing food with hungry people, which helps to prevent food waste and expands the abundance that we are provided. To support this essential mission, financial donations may be given online at stmarkscarmel.org slash give or by selecting an envelope from the adopted bushel on the connection table. A daily calendar for prayer and action this month can be found at stmarkscarmel.org slash missions. This includes daily scripture readings and related activities to offer prayer and mission work from home. And in light of Hurricane Ida, a special offering is taking place through UMCOR to aid those who have been affected by the hurricane. If you would like to give to that fund, you can do so using the special um, envelopes and just marking that you want it given to UMCOR. And please remember that because you give, St. Mark's gives. These are our announcements for this morning. I would like to turn your attention to either the blue books in the pews or going to stmarkscarmel.org slash attend to mark yourself as present. You can do, it helps us to know that you've been here, and if you have any prayer requests that you would like to share with the pastors or with the prayer chain, we're glad to hear them and we're glad to be praying for you. These are our announcements for today. Let us turn to God for a time of prayer. I will be offering a pastoral prayer, we will have a time of silence, and then we will join together for the Lord's Prayer. 
Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we come to you today remembering the beauty that you have created, the joy that we can find in worshiping and praising you. But Lord, we also come today knowing that with the beauty there can also be pain, that there can be suffering and sorrow. There are injustices in this world, O God, and you have called us and you have equipped us to answer it. We are empowered by your love, and we turn now to you to refresh ourselves, to remember that the power of your Spirit dwells with us, that as we face troubling times, as we face struggles, we do not do so alone. Lord, we lean on you. Lord, we trust you. And now, O oh God, hear the words and the prayers of our hearts the things that we are not yet able to say and yet feel so strongly. Let us pray. Eternal God, by your Son, you gave us the words that when we do not know what to pray, we could still go to you in prayer. And so it is with the saints who have gone before us and all the saints who are with us now that we pray the prayer that your Son taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our first scripture lesson today comes from the book of James, chapter 2. We'll be reading verses 14 through 17. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Who writes a symphony? He lights every star that makes our darkness bright. He keeps watch all through each long and lonely night. He still finds the time to hear a child's first breath. Saint or sinner, call and always find him there. Though it makes him sad to see the way we live, he'll always say, I forgive. He can grant a wish or make a dream come true. He can paint the clouds and turn the gray to blue. He alone knows where to find the rainbows and he alone can see what lies beyond the the leaves to gold. He knows every love. 
sad to see the way we live. You'll always say, I forgive. I forgive. If you would, uh, let us, our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. I would invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the Gospel. From there he set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he said to her, For saying that, you, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So this week I got to have a little adventure. Not one of those terrifying ones, but an actual fun adventure. I like when those happen. Um, It was earlier earlier in the week during the evening, I was walking my dog Addie, and some neighborhood kids uh, waved me aside and said, "Uh, could, could you help us with something? We know that this is your apartment unit because we recognize your dog, and there's a cat stuck in the shrub outside of your unit. Can you help us get it out? And it's like, oh, of course, let me put the dog away, but okay, well, it's like, okay, I'm glad to help, but the cat is scared, and it's one that I don't know, and it doesn't know me. I really hadn't planned on getting scratched today, but we'll see how this goes. Now, thankfully, even though the kitten was afraid, it was a very gentle animal and didn't try to scratch or bite me, was, seemed very grateful for the help, and it was just adorable, I've got to say, but... Um, A problem came up, though, when the kids waved over their uncle and said, Look at the kitten! Can we keep it? (laughs) The cat was not theirs, as I had first assumed. And um, the adventure got a little more complicated because the uncle was visiting from Venezuela and, um, yeah, didn't speak English, and my Spanish was not that confident. So the people playing translators, interpreters, were the kids. So you can bet that they were very eager to translate my question of, is this your cat and is your uncle okay with you keeping it? Yeah, no. They um, eventually accepted the fact that the uncle and I were on the same page and no, they could not keep the cat. They were not happy with this answer, but they understood. And then eventually I understood that, no, I can't adopt a cat when my husband's not here. That's not fair. So... (laughs) Next time I'll go ahead and do that. Good advice. I'll tell him you told me to do that. But, you know, sometimes in life it is hard to hear no. And even worse than hearing the word no is the struggle of having to accept the no because it's hard. Some people now are willing to accept that when someone tells them no, then that means the conversation is over and it's time to move on. Accept the fact that you can't have the kitten, make sure it goes to a safe new home and go pet the dog and you'll feel better eventually. But 
There are also some people who have never met a no that they wouldn't try to argue into submission. And that can be a good thing, that can be a bad thing, it, a lot of it depends on the context of the situation. But today, the unnamed woman, the Gentile with a sick daughter, she was one of those people who would not accept the soft no. Because Jesus gave her a soft no in his response that surely, why would you give the, f the food that belongs to the children to the dogs? Why would you throw it there? He was implying that his healing work, that his miracles were primarily for the people of Israel who held themselves apart and were known for being the children of God. They were God's children, God's chosen people set apart. So why would Jesus give to the woman what was first meant for the Israelites? But this mother, this woman saw the chance to see her daughter healed and she was going to try everything that she could to see it happen. So when he told her that soft no, her response was, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Now this tells us, this simple sentence tells us so much about her. It says that her love for her daughter ran so deep that she was going to keep going. Her desire to see her child healed was deep and great. She was willing to try and try. And even more than that, or on top of that, she knew something about Jesus. She looked at him and her faith was so great she knew that even if it was just a crumb from him, not the whole feast of his power, but just a crumb of his healing power, would be enough to change her daughter's life. She would not take no for an answer, and her faith was rewarded. It was also an important message for any Hebrews who may have been watching and listening to hear, to know that they were still loved by God, that they still held a place of importance, but that God is great enough and powerful enough that there is enough healing that there is enough love, that it does not need to be contained to just one people, but that it can spread to the entire world. For God came, for Jesus came incarnate, not just for one people, but for the love that he had for the entire world. Now in the case of the Gentile woman, the soft no was changed to a yes. Yes, I will heal your daughter. But sometimes in life, even when we ask again and again, even when we show great faith, sometimes the answer that we receive is still not the one that we want. And that's hard. It's hard when disasters strike, when hurricanes or earthquakes or fires or floods occur. And oftentimes when that happens, we're left with questions questions about what we can do, about how we can respond, why this even happened. And there is power in the question, what can I do? There is a lot of power in that question, but there's also some duality in it. This last week, I've had different people asking me, what can I do? With everything in the world, what can I do? And some asked it with this sense of, Whatever I can do, I will do it. I will do it with great faith. But sometimes we ask, what can I do? And it's said with a bit of defeat, with a bit of exhaustion, because the problems, the struggles feel so big, so great. What could one person possibly do to make a difference? How could whatever small thing I accomplish fix this big problem? Because we want to fix problems, don't we? When we see the struggle, when we see the pain, we want to fix it. And we want it to happen right now. We want there to be answers. We want there to be results. And we want it to happen on our schedule. Now, how often does God work on our schedule? Yeah, not as often as we would like. And sometimes we're tempted to think that that one small act 
that one small crumb, how could it ever be enough in the face of such a big problem? That one thing I can do on this one day that won't fix everything, what's the point? Now, I like folk tales and fairy tales. I know they're stories that are really meant for children, but I often find that there's a lot in them that we can still find useful, even when we're older. There's a lot of wisdom to be found in simple stories. And some of you may be familiar with the story of a little boy walking along the beach and tossing sea stars back into the water. And if you don't know that story, look it up, because I'm not telling that one right now. <laughs> Today, I want to share a mathematical folktale called One Grain of Rice. It's an Indian folktale that involves a clever girl outwitting a selfish Raja who in the midst of famine decides that he wants to keep the stores of grain, of, uh, the stores of rice for himself. He doesn't want to share it with the people that he had initially saved it for. Because who knows how long this famine will last, he has to make sure there's enough for himself. But she does an act of kindness for the Raja and is clever. And when the Raja says, here, let me give you a reward. Anything that you ask for your kindness, I will give it to you. And she says, give me one grain of rice. Well, that's not a very big reward. I can do better than that. Come on, ask me a bigger question. Ask me for something bigger. Let me show how powerful I am in what I give to you. So she told him, all right, I still want that one grain of rice. So today, you will give me a single grain of rice. Then each day for 30 days, you will give me double the rice you gave me the day before. Thus, tomorrow you will give me two grains of rice, the next day four grains of rice, and so on for 30 days. Now, at the end of the first week, the amount of rice that she had gained was enough for a small handful. And the Raja laughed at her, thinking, you still asked for too little. You haven't done, an, you did something wonderful and you haven't done enough with it. But by the end of those 30 days, the amounts kept doubling and growing. And by the end of the month, the entire storehouses of rice were emptied out and they were given to the people. And she made sure to give some back to the Raja to make sure that he wouldn't go hungry either. It took her a month to do it, but she was still able to gather the food that would help keep her community fed. And I know sometimes when disaster strikes, we don't want to wait. We want to answer the problem right now because there is urgency and there is fear of what will happen while we seek to solve this problem. But if we find ourselves caught in wondering what's going to happen if I can't come up with an immediate solution, if we hold back from acting, of living into our faith, then how much longer will the problem go on? And how much are we doubting God if we don't see the truth that with a small action, with just a little bit of faith, amazing things can happen? This isn't reflected just in folk tales and fantasies and fairy tales. We also see this reflected in our own stories from the Bible, in our own lessons. Consider David, who before he became a king, he was just a shepherd a child who decided to go into battle without armor, without a sword, but instead put his faith in God and used five small stones to see a giant fall. From humble origins, something amazing grew. And then by faith, God gave aid to the prophet Elijah and the widow and her son who gave him shelter during a famine. And they were struggling because when Elijah came to them, they said, no, we don't have anything. All we have is one jar of flour and one jug of olive oil. It's not enough. It's not enough for us. We can't possibly share it. But they did. And through their faith and through their love, God blessed them, and they saw that there was enough flour and oil to last them through the famine. Jesus once told his listeners that with faith the size of a tiny mustard seed, mountains can be told to stand up and move. And then every year we remember 
a poor couple who gave birth to their firstborn child in a stable because there was no room for them anywhere else. How much more humble, how much more small can you get than those types of origins? Jesus knew from personal experience that from small actions and humble places, great love can grow. Great things can still be done. There is still possibility and hope if we are but brave enough to try. Sometimes it is hard. It takes time and it takes work. It takes faith. It takes things that sometimes we don't feel able to give. But it helps to remember that when the little piece that you have to offer doesn't feel like very much, in God's hands it will be multiplied. God is able to make miracle happens, and nothing is impossible with our Lord. And as is often the case, when you step out in faith, even with just a small crumb, normally you are not stepping out alone. Others will follow with their own crumbs, with their own loaves, with their own offerings of faith and love. And when we bring it all together, when we bring the faith that each of us has individually and puts it together, we're no longer left standing with crumbs, but with a feast of hope, with a feast fit for God's kingdom. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, you tell us that with small things, much can be accomplished, that by our faith we will be healed. Lord, the way is not always clear, it is not always certain, but still we trust you, and still we believe that you will bring about a miracle, that with whatever we have to offer, if it is faithfully and lovingly given, that if it is freely given, it will be accepted. Accept us, Lord. Accept what we are offering and help us to accept the sacrifice that your Son did for us, the great love that he had for us. By the power of your Spirit and in the name of your Son we pray. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite everyone, to, as we move to a time of communion, um, for those who are watching online, now is the time to go and get some bread, some grape juice, so you can take part and for those who are here in the congregation, if you have not yet received um, one of the communion cups, uh, please raise your hand and the ushers will bring one to you. They are very useful. We will be opening them later in the service. The liturgy that we are using today comes from our hymnal, page 12, A Service of Word and Table. You can follow along as you would like. But now, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. You need not be a member of this church or congregation. You need only earnestly love him. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not with our whole heart. We, we have failed to be an obedient, obedient church. church. We have, we have not done your will. will. We, we have, have broken your law. We, we have rebelled, rebelled against your love. love. We, we have, have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive, forgive us, we pray. pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. Lord. 
God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. At this, at this time, you are invited to remove the top layer of your communion cup, and this will reveal the piece of bread. And know that this is the body of Christ given for you. And then you may remove it. Remove the second layer, for this is the blood of Christ, which is shed for you. Drink this in remembrance of the one who loves us. Let us pray. Holy God, through these simple gifts, great love was achieved. In this moment, we remember the love of your Son, a love that knew no boundaries, but instead reaches through time and space to encompass all, to encompass all with the grace that our sins are forgiven and that your love is enough to save and change the world. We give thanks for the work that God has done in our hearts, and we give thanks for the work that the Spirit is doing in us that we may be the hands and feet of Christ in the world, offering that same love to others and that same message of grace. Lord, we give thanks to you. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Hymn of Promise, that can be found on page 707 of your hymnal, or the words will be projected on the screen.
what it holds a mystery unrevealed until its season something God alone can see in our end is our beginning in our time infinity in our doubt there is believing in our life eternity in our death a resurrection at the last a victory unrevealed until its season something God alone can see sometimes our small acts of faith are things that only God can see and yet in time it is revealed and God's love and glory is known. And now may you enter God's gates with thanksgiving, going forth in peace, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace, amen. Salvation in our hearts. And